You can see the highlights of today's action from the World Cup at 10 past 11. First on HTV, the news. Queen's heartfelt thanks for remarkable golden jubilee. A million join in a day of unforgettable celebration. Concord Flypast offers the ultimate tribute. And England sharpen their skills on the golf course. The ITV News with John Suchet. Good evening, welcome to this special programme of highlights from today's Golden Jubilee celebrations, plus today's other news. And what celebrations they were. Never has London or the nation seen anything like them. The beginning of the day was remarkable enough, the procession, the Thanksgiving service and the ceremonial lunch. But the ending was something else, a clamouring sea of a million plus people engulfing the Mall. They turned the roads around Buckingham Palace, red, white and blue, while a spectacular flypast turned the skies above, the same patriotic colours. The crowds cheered and sang themselves hoarse and were rewarded with not one, not two, but three balcony appearances by the Queen. Bill Neely watched the incredible scenes. From the balcony of Buckingham Palace, the Queen has witnessed many extraordinary sights, but none to match this. A few hundred feet over the heads of a million people, maybe more, Concord and the Red Arrows fill the sky with noise and colour. A spectacular finale to four days of celebration. This Golden Jubilee has mixed ceremony and informality, old and new, and so it was today. At the end of the afternoon pageant, the Queen walked amid hundreds of children who for hours had danced and sung their way through the streets to the palace. Behind her, a mass of people moved as one, held back by a thin white line of mounted police. The sentiments of all summed up in one phrase, Lovely jubilee, lovely jubilee. As they walked, Liverpool came to London. The Jerry Marsden anthem, You'll Never Walk Alone, rang out. So on to the balcony, but not all the cheers were for the Queen. Prince William, the object of sustained screaming. The flags were flying, but the party wasn't flagging. The fly passed and its dramatic soundtrack saw to that. It was unprecedented, 27 aircraft of all shapes and sizes spanning the decades of her reign. And how do you top that? Well, try a million voices roused to patriotic fervour. to lift the rafters off the palace. Twice the Queen left the balcony and twice they had her back before they ended her jubilee with the national anthem. A remarkable end to a celebration of what the Queen herself said was a pretty remarkable 50 years. Bill Neely, ITV News.
The mood earlier in the day was a little less excited, but only a little. As well as the festive feel of her procession to St Paul's and then Guildhall, there was also the formality of the lunchtime speeches. She spoke of the strength she had gained from her family, of her gratitude to her people. Here's our royal correspondent, Tom Bradby. A million people may have gathered for the pop concert and fireworks last night, but this morning another huge crowd packed the mall. Indeed, many had never left. They were rewarded with a spectacular close-up view of the royal couple in the Gold State coach, last used for the Silver Jubilee 25 years ago. Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh were cheered out of Buckingham Palace and down the Mall as they began their journey across London. To the delight of the crowd, Princes Harry and William travelled in an open-top carriage with their uncle, Prince Andrew. Prince Charles and his sister, Princess Anne, both in uniform, rode on horseback behind their parents' coach. It had been their wish to do so. On the Strand, the traditional entrance to the City of London, the Queen's progress was held up temporarily for a centuries-old ceremony. The Lord Mayor stopped the state carriage before offering his sword to the monarch, symbolically yielding his own authority. She accepted the gesture and completed the journey up Ludgate Hill to St Paul's. In the cathedral, the Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, reached for the words of Elizabeth I. Though God hath raised me high, she said, I count the glory of my crown that I have reigned with your loves. Your Majesty, Elizabeth, our Queen, you have the respect and affection of your people. You do indeed reign with our loves. The British monarchy has a long relationship with the city of London from the centuries when King's Pass needed to raise taxes to go to war. And just as she did for her silver jubilee, the Queen moved on, by now in her new Bentley, to the Guildhall in the city. She began her speech there with a light-hearted reference to that other event currently underway. I am more than conscious at the moment of the importance of football. <laughs> Although this weekend comes about halfway through my jubilee year, as far as we are concerned, it bears no relation to a rest at half time. After Prince Charles's tribute to her last night, she thanked both her children and her husband. I take this opportunity to mention the strength I draw from my own family. The Duke of Edinburgh has made an invaluable contribution to my life over these past 50 years, as he has to so many charities and organizations with which he has been involved. <laughs> Gratitude, respect, and pride these words sum up how I feel about the people of this country and the Commonwealth and what this golden jubilee means to me. Afterwards, the Prime Minister paid a fulsome personal tribute. You unify our nation, ma'am, because you symbolise powerfully true patriotism. Not the erupting emotion of an impulse, but the steady commitment of a faithful heart so the outpouring of affection for you, ma'am, over these past weeks has not been out of deference alone. It has been toward you as a person, as a human being. And even for those who do not know you personally, they know you care for the people, are dedicated to their welfare, and will never let them down. The Queen left the Guildhall to return to the Mall. 
This central weekend has been more successful than any Palace official could have dared hope. This is, of course, the last day of what has been an extraordinary weekend. And what's clear now is the sheer level of thought and planning that's gone into making sure that at the end of this jubilee, the monarchy is riding high. It has been an eventful year, and the palace, so often criticised in the past, has barely put a foot wrong. Tom Bradby, ITV News at Buckingham Palace. After the formality of Guildhall, the fun part of the day was always going to be the Jubilee pageant. Down the Mall, a colourful mixture of past and present, with a few surprises for the Queen thrown in. She seemed to enjoy every moment, so did those watching, and the 20,000 singers, dancers and performers taking part, including one or two famous faces. As Katie Darham found out, it was quite a party. Something extraordinary was about to happen on the Mall. But as carnival dancers gathered themselves, there was an unexpected treat for the crowd as all the princes mingled and joked with some of the thousands of people who'd waited hours to see one royal, let alone several, close up. The flamboyant colours of Notting Hill Carnival's famous dancers made up the first of five parades to be unleashed this afternoon. To the delight of the crowd, and those royals already stationed in prime viewing position on a dais in front of the Victoria Monument. Now, how about this for a gospel choir? 5,000 strong gathered together just for today. They were led by Patty Boulay, whose enthusiasm was infectious. Thousands of people have been gathered here all day on the Mall, waiting to be part of this extraordinary parade and also to catch that all-important glimpse of the Queen. And they didn't have long to wait. Having finished her lunch at Guildhall, the Queen and Prince Philip arrived in time to ride down the Mall in an open-top Range Rover, accompanied by hundreds of children, dressed in yellow, waving golden ribbons. From a distance, she was carried along on a sea of gold. Behind her, the massed ranks of the many different services who've supported her over the last five decades. From the front line to the day to day. Then time for an eclectic parade to show how British life has changed over the past 50 years. From rock and roll. to Space Odyssey, and even the Hells Angels. Now their inclusion has raised the odd eyebrow. But one biker so enjoyed his newfound respectability, he thought he'd ride by the Royals a second time, to their obvious amusement. Of course, it wouldn't be a British parade without the best of British talent. And who better than Sir Cliff? I had no idea that it could be anything like this, and I don't think I've waved to so many people in my whole career. Yes! There was an epic display by performers representing all the countries of the Commonwealth. But the grand finale was a joyous rendition of a special Jubilee song by the Chicken Shed Children's Theatre Group. As two of the children led the Queen back into Buckingham Palace, it was a relaxed end to an afternoon of fun-filled entertainment, one unimaginable 50 years ago. Katie Derham, ITV News. And our Royal Correspondent Tom Bradby is now at Buckingham Palace. Tom, uh, it was, as you said in your report, way beyond what anybody expected, uh, even the Royal Family themselves. Yeah, well, John, there were just so many people and there was this fantastic sense of occasion when the uh, fly past Concord came overhead uh, a number of people including not a few journalists were literally jumping up and down with excitement uh, when Land and Hope of Glory was played and then the national anthem I think there were an awful lot of misty eyed people out there and people you, know, you saw the pictures there but up here there were huge screens and people were just looking at that vast sea of people out there on the mall and all the flags waving. You know, the truth is it took an awful long time for people to get here. Many people camped overnight. Those that didn't had a long way to travel. They had a long wait. They'll have a long journey back uh, tonight. But I've no doubt that 
almost everyone will have thought it was worth it. Um, the whole point was to have a national celebration to feel better about living in this country, and that's really what it was. And it was, I think, a really interesting insight into the, the, the national psyche, if you like. I remember the bicentennial in Paris, 200 years of the revolution. That was a fantastic occasion, but they didn't have a living family at the center of it. And I think really that's what's different here. That it really was unique. The family were up there, the people were out here. There was something really special about it. And with it, uh, Tom, a clear message about the relationship between the monarch and the people. I think so. I mean, there's a degree of sympathy, obviously, for the Queen because her you know, mother and sister have died this year. But there's been a huge turnaround in, in how people see her. You could almost say she's an iconic figure who's a sort of counterpoint to everything we don't like in, in, in our own culture. She's there. She's steady. Uh, she keeps going. And at times like that, I think we, you know, people generally do look at that, they think about it, and they value it a lot. Thank you, Tom. Still to come on this special ITV News. The people who can say we were there for the Jubilee. Pakistan and India still won't discuss the crisis in Kashmir. And the England squad take a break on the golf course. All that and news from your area when we come back. Welcome back. Most people who watched today's events from pavements along the route will now be back home, remembering a day that had both a sense of fun and a sense of history. To get a feeling of being there, Adrian Britton joined some of them during the day. Not a sign of fatigue as the mammoth weekend party entered day four. With endless supplies of flags and stamina, once again they came to the capital to celebrate, cheer and witness. There is a sense of pride. I think it's what this country's all about. We're great at pageantry and we've got to enjoy it. I wouldn't miss it for anything. It's wonderful to see the Queen still so successful at this stage in her career. The Johnson family set out from Preston this morning, never having seen a royal pageant. An early start rewarded with a close-up view of the Queen's golden carriage. Beautiful coat. The coach and the Queen, and she looks so tiny and delicate and dainty in it. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. The Quinns from Blackpool, the Benhams from Brighton, the Nagueras from Brazil and the Charltons from Australia. There probably isn't a town in this country or country in the world which isn't represented today by people who want to celebrate, but more importantly say, I was there. But to be there in the front row required hours of waiting. And for the Dunkerton family from Sussex, a night under canvas on the Mull, three generations sharing in royal history. Well, I came to see the Queen at the Silver Jubilee, and my daughter knows about this, and she's seen the photograph. She said, oh, Mum, please, can we go? We'd like to see it again. And she wanted to sleep out on the Mall overnight and experience it, so we came. And my niece and nephew came with me, Chloe and Aaron. I hardly anyone will see something like this again, so I really wanted to come, so I nagged us to come. A unique occasion with unmissable sights. Yet even after a full day's cheering, they still found the energy to flag wave and applaud. They may have partied to exhaustion, but whether carried or on foot, they left with memories to last a lifetime and stories to pass down generations. Adrian Britton, ITV News, on the Mall. We'll return to the excitement of the Jubilee later in the programme, but first we go to other news. The leaders of Pakistan and India remained as far apart as ever today in their dispute over Kashmir, despite being in the same room together. India's Prime Minister Vajpayee and Pakistan's President Musharraf were at a regional summit meeting, but they refused to speak to each other. From India, Julian Mannion reports. Before this regional summit, there had been hopes that it might see the start of a dialogue between nuclear-armed India and Pakistan. But instead, the leaders of the two countries have so far used this forum to blame each other. Pakistan's President Musharraf accused India of failing to resolve the Kashmir dispute and said his country does not want war. If war is imposed on us, we will defend ourselves with the utmost resolution and determination. The Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee put the blame squarely on Pakistan, saying that India was ready for talks, but only if Pakistan puts a stop to terrorism. We have repeatedly said that we are willing to discuss all issues with Pakistan, including Jammu and Kashmir. But for that, cross-border terrorism has to end. 
Thank you. Meanwhile, in Kashmir, the two sides are still shelling each other across the line of control. At least eight civilians died on Monday as this high-stakes confrontation continues. And adding to tension, President Musharraf of Pakistan has refused to renounce possible first use of nuclear weapons. He now says that possession of nuclear weapons by any state implies that there are some circumstances in which they may be used. Julian Mannion, ITV News, New Delhi. Here, an investigation has begun into why a train derailed in Northern Ireland today, injuring nine people, including the driver. The train was travelling from Belfast to Londonderry when three carriages left the tracks. One of them rolled down an embankment and ended up lying on its side on a beach. Initial reports suggest the derailment was caused by a landslide. Football, the only balls struck by England's players today, were of the small white variety on the golf course. The players were relaxing ahead of their big World Cup match against Argentina on Friday. There are no injuries to worry about, but tiredness after the Sweden game is a problem. From Japan, here's Mark Austin. Three days to the showdown with Argentina and England's players take to the golf course. It's all on the orders of Sven Joran Eriksson, who's prescribed 36 hours of rest and relaxation for a squad which seemed so tired in the match with Sweden. And as the players relax, Sven Joran Eriksson is here at the team hotel working on his tactical master plan to beat Argentina. And he knows full well that history dictates that this is a match that inspires real emotion in the people and the players of both nations. It's better to try to take it as a football game, not as a historic uh, revenge or things like that. In Sapporo, where the game takes place, police are preparing the biggest security operation of the World Cup so far, staging anti-hooligan drills in anticipation of crowd violence. But officials have been reassured by the behaviour of England fans already in Japan. There's been no trouble reported at all, merely intense disappointment at England's performance. A performance these players relaxing on that golf course today know has to improve if they're to stay in this World Cup. Mark Austin, ITV News, Awaji Island, Japan. In a few moments, we take a final look back at the Queen's amazing day through the eyes of some of those taking part, the performances and the preparations after the news from you. Hello again. Today has been an exciting day, to say the least, for those watching the Golden Jubilee celebrations. For those performing and taking part, it was exhilarating and not a little frightening. Juliet Bremner has been talking to some of them. It was an awe-inspiring occasion. Months of behind-the-scenes work reaching a crescendo as the Queen took to the streets in her grandest state coach. Whichever way you looked at it, this was British pageantry at its finest. Every minute had been planned and coordinated down to the last detail. As the Queen and Prince Philip were pulled up the hill towards St Paul's, the 12 cathedral bells were playing a special jubilee peal. 68-year-old Michael Chilcott first rang the bells here in 1946. He's witnessed many state celebrations but will remember today with great pride. I feel very privileged because when I rang here for the coronation, I was ringing with men who were probably ringing here in Queen Victoria's reign. And today, some of our younger members will probably be ringing for King Charles's coronation. The Queen wanted to give thanks for the support she's received from all corners of her realm. It was a day choreographed to display the diversity of her people. Perhaps no one did it more spectacularly than the Notting Hill Carnival dancers led by Anushka Case in a costume that had taken six weeks to make. That's quite scary actually. <laughs> Being the first one down, everyone can see you, so um, it's quite hard. Um, you just have to go for it really and just hope for the best. They serenaded from the ground and saluted from the skies. The end of four days of national rejoicing in honour of one woman. Juliet Bremner, ITV News. And that's the end of tonight's programme and the completion of these Golden Jubilee celebrations after four days of flag-waving, cheering, pride and fun. Today was a day that those who were in London or at celebrations around the country will remember forever. And a day the Queen probably won't forget either. Bye-bye.
Biogen, controlling energy for homes and business. Good evening, sir. Weather warning has been issued for tomorrow. Heavy, thundery rain with the risk of flooding, mainly across the east side of the country. Tonight we can actually see the first start of that rain coming in, in towards the southeast and east Anglia. We'll still have those showers across the northwest, although eventually petering out. But tonight, not really that cold, not as cold as last night. Tomorrow we can pick up on that heavy, thundery rain that's going to sweep northwest right across the country, eventually reaching western Scotland. Some very, very heavy rain in there. The Midlands and the south Southeast eventually drying out for Wales and the southwest, just really a scattering of showers, but not warm in amongst all that rain, a high of 17 and very windy along the east. So there's a reminder of tomorrow, very bad weather indeed. Power Gen, controlling energy for homes and business. Well, next on HTV, the highlights of today's play in the World Cup.